Hi guys, it's Mike from Final Form Freaks. I'm with Dan. Um, we're just doing a uh, quick deck profile. Um, it's a bit loud in here, so I do apologise if you don't hear everything. Uh, it's a busy night at our local. So, uh, I'm, the deck profile I'm going to do is my Sorbet deck. Um, I've been meaning to do this for a while. Uh, I keep changing it. Um, I'm not 100% sure with it. Um, but we'll go through the deck and then um, you could leave a comment down below, see what, you know, your thoughts on it. And uh, yeah, so Sob 8 Wish Leader. Um, so on his once per turn, so when one of your battle cards attacks, uh, it gets 5k for the duration of the turn. Then you choose up to one Dragon Ball uh, from your deck or life, add it to your hand uh, and then shuffle any areas. So not as good as Shenron or Purunga where they can give you uh, two Dragon Balls but it's good because it's a leader that can actually attack um, where Purunga and Shenron can't really do anything um, so once I get to seven we'll go on to the flip side I love this artwork it's awesome um, so then you get to freeze a resurrected Emperor so you you have the usual um, different uh, effects on the, the flip side once you uh, get seven Dragon Balls. So you can draw a card, you can choose one yellow or black desire card um, from your hand with an energy cost less or equal. Um, activate its main skill, which is cool. I really like his um, final ability. It comes in clutch um, really, really well. So you remove all seven um, if you do, you choose a total of up to two of your opponent's battle cards and energy and switch them to rest mode. Uh, and then this card gets um, uh, an extra 15k boost, uh, which is really good. Um, it just puts very problematic cards in rest mode. Uh, it's more of the energy more than anything, uh, you know, especially when your opponent's, you know, uh, untapped energy from using a negate or whatever. Um, yeah, there is negates now where you can take a life and stuff like that, but then that's still forcing them to take a life um, with the negate. So really, really powerful. So we'll go through the um, through the deck. So first we're going. To, I'll let it focus. There we go. So we're going to go with freezer revenge in motion. So you place this card in the drop area. Once you play it, you get to draw a card. So you kind of plus on yourself with that because you get to draw. But the main thing that you're doing it is for its effect here is that you get to choose um, a freezer card with an energy of four or less from your deck and then place it in the drop area and then shuffle your deck, which is really, really good. It, you'll, you're probably wondering why it's really good. We'll get to it when you see the um, desire card that's for, uh, for this deck. So we run four of those. Next we have uh, Tuzlaki Togama. This card is really, really crucial to the deck. Uh, another one drop, but when you play this card from your hand, you choose up to one yellow desire card from your deck or drop area. So it gives you options and then you get to add it to your hand uh, and then you shuffle your deck that, um, if you look through it. Which is really really good. Uh, we run run four of those. Uh, next is our uh, other seeker um, for getting our Dragon Balls. So we have the Dragon Ball Seeker Sorbet. So when you play this card from your hand you choose up to one Dragon Ball from your deck and add it to your hand. So giving you more options of trying to find your um, Dragon Balls essentially. Uh, slightly different to the Dragon Ball Secret Ball model, which just puts it in your drop. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we run four of those as well, because you need you need them in the deck. You need all them searches. Next we go with the Super Combo. A lot of people wonder why I was playing um, this Super Combo. Um, it's yellow. It still has the same effect as what the, the black one does. So, and it's really, really good. So sparking five, when you combo with it, um, leader card is yellow, draw a card. Also, it's the zero cost 10K as well, which is really, really good. And you, you've you got to have four super combos, essential to any deck. 
you got to run four. You haven't got to, but you should. It's always as well as two. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, a lot of people wonder why I'm playing Deadly Defenders in this, because um, the deck is actually it's fairly aggro, um, but it's good for a bit of defense. Um, especially when you want to wait out, you know, them crucial turns when you want to drop the, you know, the bomb, the like the freezer bomb with everything. So we all know what the the, the defenders do. So you know, during your opponent's turn, uh, this card. Well, obviously our leader card is yellow, and this card is in rest mode. Your opponent has to kill this card, um, basically, and it gets minus five k, um, which isn't bad. So it's still a fifteen k on their turn. So. But, yeah, we're only running two of those, though. So, only two Deadly Defenders, just for a bit of pressure. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, right, okay, so this is Freezer Back From Hell. I love this artwork on this, so cool. You can only ever um, play one of these. Um, you, it doesn't mean that you can only have one of them in the deck. You can have multiples of them in the deck, but you can only ever have one of them out. Um, so I'll go through the effects. I do apologise for the glare on this because of the um, the mirror effect. So you get to choose one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode, ignoring barrier. It can't be switched to active mode until the next turn. Really good, especially if I know this sounds daft, but say if your opponent's played Shenron Gogeta, you've survived that turn. I don't know how you would have survived, but if you did, you could play this guy, and then that guy's not. Um, going uh, into active next yeah, turn. You lock them out. You lock them out. It's really, really good. Um, but the thing that I like about most about this is the sparking seven effect. So um, when your opponent has seven or more cards in rest mode, so that's battle cards and energy, if you're, yeah, and leader, if your leader card is yellow, which it is, well, it's a yellow Shenron, it has to be, um, and this card is in rest mode, you deal an automatic um, one point of damage to your opponent. You know, especially if you've gone in all guns blaze and you've left them with one and you bring this guy out, it's like, yeah, really, really good. And we're only running one. A lot of people wonder why I'm only using one and not multiples of them. Um, I just don't see the point. You, you're not always going to be able to play it all the time and get that sparking effect off. It's just more of like, if you see it, great. It's, yeah. So now we get into the freezers. So uh, you'll see a lot of different four drop freezers in the deck. So we've gone with the old school uh, Mecha Freezer. Um, this works really well. So uh, he has dual attack, which is great. It's 15K, but when you play this card, you may place uh, one card from your hand in the drop area. If you do so, choose up to two of your opponents, uh, rest my battle cards and KO those cards um, and then this card gets um, double strike as well for the duration turn which is really really good um, we're only running only running two there is quite a few different freezes in the deck so now we get into the <laughs> into the nasty stuff we get into the promo stuff um, this card hasn't seen a lot of play um, but it has seen, I would say, more play now with this leader just because of the uh, Desire card. So, this card is still pretty good. So, when you play this card, your opponent reveals their hand. So, very similar to the, the hit, but it's only one card. Uh, with the hit, you could take two cards, couldn't you? Um, so, you choose one battle card among them. Uh, in your opponent plays uh, that card in the battle area in rest mode. I did this quite a few times, and I did it to when to Matt. He had the ten drop uh, Demegra uh, in his in his hand. I took it, I put it in rest mode, and then um, I ended up having this guy and then KOing it. <laughs> so he was a bit he was slightly devastated with that. Um, so we're on two of them. So it's quite quite interesting because then you get to see your opponent's hand essentially then you can kind of discover to yourself how am I going to go to go for game with it really um, and he's you know um, he's nothing to be snuffed at he is a 20k double strike which is really good um, so the next one is 
uh, let me just get in focus. Another promo. So this is the Occupation of Evil Freezer. Um, this is one of my favourites. I would probably run more of this in the deck if I had more. Um, so his double strike is 20k. Really, really good. So his activate main is that you place two of your yellow battle cards other than this card in your drop area. And then you get to choose one golden freezer, the resurrected terror, uh, from your hand uh, and evolve it and then onto this card. If you do so, you get to draw two cards. So yeah, you've lost two cards, but then you, you gain two cards back from it. So really, really good. And we run two of them. I only have two. So... And then we get onto the the seven drop. This hasn't seen play in ages, but because of the new desire card, um, occupation freezer, and this is like the bread and butter of the deck. This is like your your win con. This is your go to. This is your aggro for the deck. So um, he has triple strike, which is obviously dangerous to anyone who knows what triple strike does. So when this uh, when a card evolves into this card, place all rest mode battle cards except for this card in the drop area. Now, some people said to me that this doesn't ignore barrier, but then I've seen people who have played this which have ignored barrier, so I don't know. The only reason I believe it ignores, well, ignores the barrier is because it doesn't say choose. It's not a chosen effect. Um, but the second part of the, the actual writing of it has choose so the barrier or anything after that you know obviously you, you won't be able to ignore um, but the first text I believe would, would ignore it but we'd, it's up for debate let me know if you guys have had it at your locals and you know if people are playing it they ignore the barrier or if people don't ignore the barrier please let me know um, I'd be interested to uh, to find out and we run four of them I was only running three but I decided to run four just because sometimes I wasn't seeing it uh, enough um, which yeah there is quite a bit of draw power in the deck if you see the draw power but we'll get into that in a minute anyway <laughs> So, next on the agenda is our negate, so we're playing time magic. I've debated about this with either using this or Nimbus. I have, I do have Nimbus as a sideboard, um, and I, I do have some other stuff in sideboard as well. Um, it always comes down to what you play against. I find time magic's really good when you do play against the Gogeta or something like that. Um, so, let's go into what time magic does. So. Your leader card is yellow, which it is, it's a yellow leader. You negate the attack, then you choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode, ignoring barrier. It can't switch to active mode until um, your next turn. So, really, really good. Um, sparking five, so just five cards in the drop area. You can basically um, activate this card's counter skill uh, from your hand um, by an uh, adding a card from your life, so yeah, really, really good. Take one instead of three in some cases. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and we run four of those, four negates, just to make you survive that that little extra longer. And I've used cards like that before to stop critical, so I'll get the card to my hand instead of getting the crit and losing the card. E exactly. Yeah, that that is one of the the main things with it. Um, so next, we have personal ambition. I love this decide card, it's brilliant. You're basically playing this for free. Um, and you're probably wondering why, because obviously it says, well, you, you got one energy. How are you playing it for free? So, this card is a desire card. If your leader card is a Shenron, um, so you can play this with any Shenron you know, leader, um, you get to draw a card, but then you choose up to one of your energy and switch it back to active. That's how it's basically playing it for free. Um, so you're always plussing with it. It just makes it so that you, you're just milling through your deck, searching out more cards. Um, and I actually run four of them in the deck. I, just 
gives you more draw power. And you get the desired card back when you um, uh, when you awaken with your leader, because you get to. Um, if you look at the bottom, you uh, choose one desire card. So you could you could take the personal ambition and take it into your hand, and then you know draw another card, so on and so forth. Now everyone's probably going to boo and probably leave really negative comments. Uh, Cobbler Lust is in the deck. Now there isn't as much Cobbler Lust. Um, I'm only running a couple of them. But we all know what this does. It's really, really good. Really, really powerful card still. Um, the reason for using this is because I can use it. Um, because my leader card is uh, a Freezer Army. It may be Shenron, but it does have the keyword Freezer Army. So, um, battle card that's played its skills negated for the duration of turn yeah it doesn't get round deflect but it gets rid of you know chain attack trunks it gets rid of so many problematic cards you are goku, as well, you are goku because it doesn't have deflect yet, so uh, really really good card and we're only using two reason for that is that i have two in the sideboard <laughs> so one because it's coming out now with uh, the sixth set is bring boo back the seven drop boo <laughs> Doesn't have deflect. Doesn't have deflect. So really, really good. And the last um, card in the deck is our desire card. Now this is why we're saying about the desire card. This is what makes you know these four drop freezers really, really good for the deck. So this card gains desire in all areas. It's a desire card. So uh, if your leader card is a yellow Shenron, so you can only use this with the yellow Shenron. Choose one freezer card from your drop area with an energy of four or less and play it. Awesome. You can play any four drop freezer for free. Um, um, well, not for free, but you, you, you're playing it for two energy and then you're getting a four drop freezer out. So, yeah, you can. You, yeah, I, I say that you, you can. You can play it for free with his effect. But then you wouldn't be able to do his ultimate effect, the final wish. It it all depends on how you. Um, what setup and what time. Yeah, you yeah. Uh, and we run four of those. So yeah, you're probably wondering why how this is uh, this deck has gone like really uh, aggro, is because what you'll tend to find to do is them four drop freezers that you've that you saw. What you, you you go to is are is to to play this and to either to play one of these. Um, it all depends, you know, if your opponent's got a massive hand size, or if you know what they're kind of running in a deck. Um, you know, this guy's really crucial to um, to play, so you can see the hand, and then um, the the other four drop. Is so you can play the seven trot. So essentially, on turn four, if you had um, two of the occupation um, freezers in the um, in the drop, you you could effectively play two two triple strikes in one turn, which is really really horrible. You, you can effectively play more if you wanted to do the final wish uh, uh, if you wanted to use another wish card um, you could you know you could have this guy see the hand and then play two of these and then get two triple strikes out you've seen the hand you see how many negates they've got and then if you've got like enough super combos and enough to combo out of it then maybe you can go for game with it um, but with this style of deck as well, turn two, turn three, you can get the seven drop out quite quickly. Yeah. And you can cause that much pressure. You smash exactly. Him down a bit, yeah. Then you can go on the defensive and, for us. Yeah, turn, and, the, and then smash him Exactly what Dan said. And the beauty thing is, is that you don't mind that this is going to drop, because you're just going to bring it back with the the the, the wish card anyway. So it's like there there is the one drop that puts this in the drop, so and you're able to play it. But then afterwards, once it's your your opponent's got rid of it. It's going to go in the drop anyway, and there's four, four of the um, seven drops in the deck, and you, you know, I find now in in the deck I've seen, um, I see the seven drops more now, 
because of I've put more draw power in the deck. Um, I do I do sideboard um, Nimbus, uh, two Nimbus, um, two more Cold Blood Lust. I actually sideboard um, Bad Rings in the deck as well because depending on what deck I've gone against. Um, Bad rings can be crucial with the, um, the triple strike. Yeah, especially if the shim runs out the cut once and again the attack. Yeah. Bad ring then stops that and yeah. still lost the life. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I sideboard the shocking death ball as well. So that's quite interesting because if you get the final wish off, um, obviously this guy becomes um, an extra 15k, so it becomes a 30k push. I also put double strike champers in my sideboard as well. People wonder why. It all depends on what decks you want to play against, especially if you play against the deck that tries and stalls out. Like the Gogeta deck tries and stalls out until he gets enough ramp to play the, go the seven drop Gogeta. But by the time he gets the seven drop, I've hit him with triple strikes and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, the, the shocking death ball gives, when he attacks, it'll give him an extra 15K on top. So then he becomes, 45k. And 45k with the champ with the double strike. Double strike, so it's a good push. And I also sideboard the um, two Shamrons so to give him crit as well. So it, it adds pressure. I take the like obviously I take certain cards out to put them in, but that's why I put in my sideboard. I'll um, let us know what you think about the uh, the deck, guys. Um, I know a lot of people who have done this uh, deck profile. Um, <laughs> Uh, I've had the same thing um, of like adding the similar cards and um, yeah it's it's very hard to do because you, you're always needing the four drop freezer and I totally forgot this at the last but we do have the seven dragon balls as well they were the last card for me to uh, do and I, I didn't realise they were one to one side so that's my bad um because you, you have to run seven Dragon Balls in the deck. You don't have to run all of the vanilla Dragon Balls. You can add others if you do have them. I don't have any of them. Um, but um, would I add any others? Probably not. Um, Depends on the cost and effect because we only know about three yeah, so far. I have seen someone who did a deck profile with this who has... He has four of the promo freezers that lets you see your opponent's hand and then he he uses the the one the the one star is it the one star that drops the card from the hand yeah it is isn't it yeah so and he played that as well so it was like he ended up um milling a bunch of cards from from his opponent's hand and putting it in rest mode and then killing everything um which was a bit weird but mine's more aggro so uh, I hope you like the deck profile guys please like share and subscribe and we'll be putting more content soon we're actually going to do some um, movie reviews and some gaming reviews and stuff like that as well so I hope you enjoyed the video guys and see you again soon peace out bye